Uh, and I would like to just ask you, as you're falling asleep at night, imagining uh, where the future takes us in terms of what you're, what, where you are right now, especially as it relates to this incredible uh, study that you just published. And I will say, you know, the press took your study and said, you know, uh, laboratory reverses vision loss in, in, that, in laboratory animals. Really, I think, perhaps missing the point that you revealed that mammals retain the information about being young and, and having vitality again, that it's all still there. And that, you know, your metaphor of it's there on the DVD, but it is just scratched over time and that you're able to buff the DVD and allow us to listen to this incredible uh, music of youth and vitality again, that it's there within each and every one of our cells. And that, you know, to me represents uh, the incredible, uh, you know, empowerment of, of where this may go. So let's say we, we play it forward in an ideal world that you have this, keep this incredible laboratory, unlimited funding, where could we be, let's say, 10 years from now? Uh, yeah, well, so I was hoping in my career that we would help our children and, and our grandchildren, but things have gone so quickly. Um, it, it's really a pleasure to be alive right now and, and honored to be part of this. I, I think about it a lot, David, of course. Um, the... What I did as soon as we made this discovery was to think about how can we apply this? And I've spent some of my career um, doing clinical trials, starting biotech companies. Uh, because we treated the eye, uh, we could immediately imagine treating glaucoma. Um, and so we're, we're working towards that. So in the near term, I'm hoping that we'll be able to use the AAV, the adenovirus, adeno associated virus technology to for the first time, restore vision in patients with glaucoma. Right now, there's nothing that you can do to reverse the disease. Very poor uh, prognosis. Uh, perhaps macular degeneration, perhaps damage to the optic nerve, maybe spinal injury could be reversed. But you're right. Um, I'm glad you picked up on that because it, it was surprising that the media didn't really grasp what I think is the main discovery here, uh, which is that all cells in the body seem to have this ability to reset, not to zero, because that would just be fairly easy, but getting them back to being young, but not so young that they're dysfunctional. How do cells know how to do that? Where is that information to be young again? Where is that stored? That's still a mystery. Uh, but I can tell you there are a lot of scientists now who are, who are searching for it. And when we find it, it's going to be a big deal. Uh, I, I hope that Within our lifetime, we see uh, this explode and that we'll be able to treat many different diseases of aging. You could reverse the age of your heart. Um, you're heading for heart failure. You, you, know, you turn the age of the heart back to 30 or 20. Um, ultimately, where this is going, I think maybe in our lifetimes, maybe for our children, uh, is to reset the age of the body, whether it's with gene therapy or perhaps one day uh, just a pill that you, you take for a few weeks you wind the clock back and your body isn't just acting young, it literally would be young. And if you have a young body, you don't get heart disease, you don't get Alzheimer's. Uh, there was a recent study by my colleague Manuel Serrano who reprogrammed the brain of old mice and got neurogenesis and memory back. These are things that I hope uh, we'll be able to achieve. Now, just in, in case it's not clear, we have to be very careful because if you go too far and too quickly, you can cause problems, you can cause cancer even. But where we were very lucky with our treatment, these three genes, even though we pumped the mouse full of them, either just in the eye or the whole mouse, there was no sign over a year of any increased cancer. So we think we've just lucked out and found what is this ancient rebuilding, reprogramming mechanism that probably helps uh, one of these uh, salamanders regrow a limb or helps our liver regrow the rest of the liver if you, if you cut a piece out. Um, and regrow the optic nerve if you do what we did. So the refinement then of the of the factors was you you went with three of the four, and the other nuances would be that have already been explored uh, in laboratory animals have has been uh, in adult animals how long they receive it and shut turning it on and, and turning it off, and you you do have that ability then to turn it on and turn it off. 
We do. So we engineered the virus. Um, we've got our own special brand that if you give doxycycline, the antibiotic, the virus is engineered to respond to the drug, to turn on the genes. And then when you take it away from the mice, they just drink it, drink the water with doxycycline, it switches off. And the same can be done for the patients that we hope to treat. So you could imagine that the doctor gives the injection in the eye to the glaucoma patient, take these antibiotics for three weeks, come back, we'll measure your eyesight. And then if it's restored enough, you stop taking the antibiotic. But what gets interesting is if your eyesight ages again and you lose your eyesight, you just take another course of antibiotics and you just repeat that process as many to times. To activate that pathway. Right. We don't know how many times you can reset the system. It could be once. It could be 50 times. Um, I would say that it's going to be more than once for sure.